Hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Wilfred. I work for Moondraft Innovation Labs India. It's a design and uh, customer experience company. I'm very excited to present a session on Terraforms and uh, infrastructure as code. Um, so <clears throat> recently, uh, around uh, one, one year back, uh, I got a chance working on Terraform, and um, uh, that was for a uh, migration project that we uh, supported. Um, and uh, the client had to migrate the whole of their uh, application, uh, including tech as well as infrastructure, um, from their existing environment to um, um, AWS cloud. So, um, and part of the request uh, was to also automate the whole process. Like, um, and this involved uh, around, uh, I think, 350 or uh, 400 odd resource uh, that has to be created on AWS. And uh, uh, initially, it was uh, a bit of, um, um, I would say, a challenge for us to uh, create a reform configuration for each of these resource. But um, uh, with time, uh, it all made sense uh, to how, uh, and it, it uh, made more sense to why a lot of customers are um, moving or leaning towards uh, infrastructure as code and um, leveraging tools like Terraforms. So uh, here am I uh, uh, giving my thoughts on uh, Terraforms and uh, infrastructure as code. And uh, we'll be going through uh, some of the concepts of uh, IAC and uh, Terraforms. Uh, we'll be uh, also talking about some of the Terraform commands. Uh, and uh, we'll end the presentation with a, a demo on how Drupal is created um, on AWS with um, Terraform and a CICD tool uh, we'll be using um, Azure DevOps for that. Um, also, uh, the combination that we'd be using would be Terraforms with Ansible. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, what is uh, infrastructure as code? So, uh, put in very simple term, uh, infrastructure as code is uh, the concept of consolidating all your um, all the knowledge of a system admin uh, and operator, and then putting everything uh, in programs. So these programs helps uh, helps us to automate things and uh, make uh, make it in a very systematic manner. Um, and also, um, it it also involves uh, uh, you know automating and uh, um, the, the creation or process of process of uh, doing things would be very uh, streamlined in a better way. And uh, for uh, for those of us who are new to this term infrastructure, uh, infrastructure is nothing but uh, I can say it's resource which helps us to uh, run an application. So, for example, if uh, if it's a PHP application, um, those uh, resource uh, like um, you will need a server, you will need uh, a PHP that's installed uh, within that server, you will need um, some of the um, uh, things like a load balancer, a database, uh, a DNS, um, everything together uh, is your infrastructure and without that your application wouldn't work. Um, and think about manually installing all of this uh, in one environment. So this is uh, more of a redundant uh, task, I would say. And uh, there are high chance uh, that there, there will be human error and we, we might get a uh, last minute surprise when we always deploy to prod. And I'm just talking about um, deploying that to one environment. Think about multiple environments like dev prod, uh, QA pre-prod. You get multiple environments and um, you always tend to miss out on things. Um, so that's where infrastructure comes, uh, infrastructure's code comes uh, in, in play. Um, and uh, with, with that, uh, the, uh, the, the few benefits that we get is uh, you, you'll have uh, easier deployments, uh, you can uh, create uh, good documentation, you can uh, add this to your version control, uh, you can also do, uh, review this uh, with your peers, uh, you can, of course, reuse the code and also uh, test it as well. Um, let me take a quick pause and uh, uh, quickly show you uh, how uh, 
easy this is to just uh, run it from, um, uh, uh, this, is, this is my um, Azure DevOps, and I have, I have a pipeline which is already set up. Um, this is my pipeline. Um, we'll go through it uh, in depth in a bit. Um, so I have a branch uh, called Azure Pipeline, which is um, uh, which is already there. And the whole idea is when I uh, run this branch or this pipeline, um, this is my um, AWS console. And right now you can see I, I am uh, having zero uh, EC2 instance, uh, which is running. And uh, as soon as I run this pipeline, and once this is uh, complete, uh, you'll be seeing um, new uh, a new resource that will be set up um, in my AWS console. So uh, let's give it a minute, and uh, let me switch back to uh, slides. We'll come back uh, in a bit here. All right. So. Uh, when we talk about IAC, it's just not one uh, single task. It involves uh, multiple tasks. So there are, uh, there's, there, it involves uh, creating your infrastructure. That's, uh, that's the first thing that you'll have to do. And once the uh, infrastructure is uh, provisioned, you'll have to configure that infrastructure. Um, once that's done, you'll have to deploy that uh, configured and uh, provisioned infrastructure. And uh, due to that, uh, we don't go with just uh, one tool for um, this whole process. It, uh, it would be a combination of multiple tools. So um, it would be more like a combination of Terraforms with Ansible um, or CloudFormation with Ansible. So uh, tools like Terraform is mainly used to provision the uh, infrastructure, but um, Terraform won't be able to um, configure your uh, provisioned infrastructure. So for that, uh, we'd be using another tool like Ansible. And uh, for this um, demo, I have gone with uh, Terraform with uh, Ansible combination. Uh, and for deploying, of course, I've uh, used uh, Azure uh, DevOps, and uh, you can also use other CACD tools for that. So that brings us to uh, Terraform. So Terraform is open source. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, founded by uh, HashiCorp, um, and uh, um, it, uh, there's, there is a HashiCorp configuration language, which is basically a uh, .tf file extension where you'll be defining your uh, resources. Um, it, it uses declarative uh, programming language, uh, which makes it easier for uh, everyone to understand the syntax. Um, so let's, let's uh, take a quick look at the architecture uh, on, on your right. Um, so basically, it, in, it involves uh, two uh, components, that is core and providers. So uh, Terraform core consists of uh, the uh, Terraform config as well as the state. Uh, Terraform config is uh, nothing but uh, the uh, Terraform files in which uh, you define the resource, and uh, it basically has set of resource and its attribute. Um, Terraform state is where the Terraform stores the state of your current infrastructure, and it's it's usually a, a file with uh, the extension .tf state. Um, it's it's with that file that Terraform knows uh, what is the current state and what's the desired state that you want to be. And if you make any changes to uh, the infrastructure, it's with that state file, Terraform tells you exactly this is, this is going to be, uh, this is the modification that you're going to do in your, um, uh, in your infrastructure. Um, uh, coming to providers, uh, provider is where uh, Terraform knows uh, which, uh, which is the provider that it needs to connect. Um, Terraform can uh, talk to any um, system which is backed by an API. So um, few, uh, there are a few providers uh, like uh, Azure, uh, AWS, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, I think over uh, uh, 3,000 providers are supported uh, currently. Um, so yeah, so that, that's how you can uh, define 
uh, a, a, a Terraform uh, configuration. You can, uh, you can use resource keyword uh, followed by the, uh, the resource name and, the, and, and your name. And uh, under that, you can, uh, inside this block is where you can define the attributes. <clears throat> um, we have covered this Terraform states, but yeah. So uh, one thing I didn't mention here is the uh, Terraform states is by default going to get generated within the um, project. So within the project root uh, with a .tf uh, state extension. Um, but uh, it's not recommended to you know, uh, save that within the project root because this file has all, all the infrastructure details. It, it might have all your um, uh, access key, secret, and uh, things like that. So uh, due to that, uh, it's better that we store uh, this uh, remotely. Uh, it's always recommended to uh, use um, Terraform Cloud or um, S3 bucket uh, to store that backend. In this case, I have uh, used uh, S3 backend uh, S3 bucket uh, to uh, store the TF state. Um, that's, that's how you uh, define the provider. Uh, you can define with provider keyword and uh, followed with the provider name, uh, version, uh, and region. Um, so let me quickly open this uh, page. And Right now, uh, if you go to uh, registry.terraform.io slash browser slash providers, you will see uh, the list of uh, provider it supports, and uh, it supports over uh, 36K um, providers. So, um, yeah, let me go back. So, uh, resource block is, um, is, is, implemented by provider. Um, if, if you connect to an AWS provider, AWS has got its own resource block. And this is the uh, block where you define uh, what type of resource that you need. Uh, if you uh, go back to the previous uh, slide uh, on, on the right, uh, that's an example of how you uh, define the uh, VPC, AWS VPC resource. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you define uh, an AWS provider uh, versus uh, uh, another, a, a, a different provider, that provider might have a different resource. So it all depends on what provider you connect. Um, yeah, and, and each uh, resource type is implemented by a provider. Um, similar to resource, uh, we have uh, uh, data source as well. Uh, it's very similar to resource. Uh, this is also uh, implemented by the provider, but uh, the difference here is uh, you you can uh, use this uh, uh, this data, and and you can uh, whatever output that uh, this provides, you can easily use that as an input to another uh, Terraform block. Um, we'll we'll go through this uh, when we uh, in our demo. <coughs> So uh, the next thing is uh, uh, using variables and outputs. There are uh, three ways of uh, uh, using uh, or uh, defining variables, um, input variables, output variables, and local values. Uh, input variables is where uh, we can um, serve, uh, you, can, you can put this variable as a parameter uh, to, to a Terraform resource. Um, output variable is uh, is where it will return values uh, from uh, from your resource, and uh, local uh, variable is where you can assign a short name uh, uh, to to a block. Um, that's how uh, you will uh, define uh, an input variable uh, followed uh, with a, a variable keyword, um, the the input name and the type. Uh, you also can uh, define uh, uh, the uh, provide the default. Uh, values uh, for the variable. Um, and uh, this is how you can uh, define the output variable. Um, and local values are uh, defined inside locals uh, block and followed with the variable name. Uh, local variable can be referred as local dot uh, the variable that name that you provide. 
Um, few Terraform uh, commands uh, here. Uh, mostly you'll be uh, working with these commands. Um, the first one is uh, tf init. This is where you can or you will initialize a, a, a Terraform projects, and this is where some of the files will get um, generated. Uh, once that's done, you will write the Terraform configuration, and uh, you will run, when you run the TF plan, um, it's like a dry run of what your infrastructure would be looking like. It will exactly show you, um, you're going to create this many infrastructure. Uh, when you run Terraform apply, that's when the actual uh, plan is going to get executed, um, followed with, uh, if you want to uh, destroy or uh, remove any of your uh, resource, you can also uh, use the TF destroy. All right, so uh, let's uh, switch back to demo. So um, right now you can see uh, these two uh, are you all able to see the screen? Yeah, so there are uh, two uh, main stages, uh, validate and apply. So that uh, two stages are uh, right now complete. Uh, before uh, going into that, I'll just quickly show you how the uh, CI, uh, the Azure is talking to AWS. So. Um, I'm using uh, this uh, security credentials. Um, if you go to security credentials, there is access key. And this key I'm going to add uh, in my um, Azure uh, service connection. Uh, these are the service connection, and I'm using uh, this particular service connection. Uh, if you edit this, you'll be seeing uh, the uh, key and uh, secret that I'm using. and I'm, uh, granting permission for all pipelines. So that's how the, uh, uh, the Azure is uh, connected with uh, AWS. Now going back to the pipeline. So uh, that's, my, that's my current pipeline. So, uh, so it has basically uh, two uh, stages, validate and apply, and this is uh, driven by the uh, Azure pipeline YAML file. Uh, which I'll be showing in a moment. But uh, within these stages, uh, all, all your steps, tasks, uh, install, init, uh, validate, all these are uh, certain Terraform commands. Um, and inside apply, uh, you will again see the same one, but here you will see the plan. Um, and here you will see these are all the uh, resource that's going to get uh, created, um, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, you will see there are going to be uh, 18 uh, resources uh, that's going to get created, and um, these are the outputs that's uh, going to be, and um, in apply, uh, you'll again see the same step, uh, but this is where your resources are going to get created. So it's going to get, it's going to create a VPC, uh, some IAM role, um, some policies, uh, uh, some subnets, security group, uh, the DB instance, and and finally it's going to uh, apply that and it's going to show that 18 resource uh, got added. And uh, it shows uh, the uh, DNS, the IP, uh, and other details. So um, now uh, what happens is here, this, this is what Terraform does. So here the resource got provisioned, but the provisioned resource is not configured yet. So this is not enough to um, spin up a Drupal. So what happens is now once the provisioned resource is initialized, um, we need to also hook in uh, a, a, another uh, tool like Ansible to configure some of these um, dependencies. So here what I've uh, uh, done is uh, here, uh, before that let me just go to AWS and refresh this. Now you will see a new um, uh, Drupal instance uh, got created. And 
if I go inside this, uh, you'll see all, all the uh, VPC ID, uh, the networking details and everything. All these are created with that Terraform code. Uh, and the most important thing here is if you go inside actions and uh, there is something called as user data. So uh, user data is where um, you, um, you tell the, the, the resource that when this is getting initialized, you'll have to, um, you'll have to install or you'll have to uh, run these, these tasks. So in this case, I'm using a cloud config template for that. Um, and that's, that's using uh, or that's creating uh, some of this uh, Git package, Python. Uh, it's setting some uh, Ansible user, which, which I'll be using to SSH to the server. Um, it's, it's writing some files. Uh, it's basically uh, installing Drupal uh, with, with Drush. And the other important part is it's also pulling a, a, an Ansible playbook from, uh, from an external repository. And uh, the playbook is uh, site.yaml, and uh, the repository is uh, Drupal uh, AWS playbook. So if I go into uh, Drupal AWS uh, playbook over here, uh, which is, OK, it's, it's showing in. Hope that's visible to everyone. Um, so uh, this this repository is is what is pulled uh, by that uh, uh, cloud in it. And um, here, if you go in uh, site.yaml, it's got some uh, some task uh, with CloudWatch, PHP, Drupal, and Nginx. And each of these uh, roles or task, if you go inside. Uh, if you go inside CloudWatch, uh, for example, uh, and go inside uh, main, uh, so this this installs an agent uh, within that uh, EC2 instance to set up logs, and it 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 just uh, parses that logs to uh, your CloudWatch um, logs. So uh, similarly, uh, there there is a uh, task for Drupal where um, you can basically write all all the um, steps which involves uh, installing a Drupal. Um, you have uh, nginx task as well. Um, it 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 does uh, all, all it, it removes uh, Apache. It it creates nginx. Uh, it it's copying a certain uh, configuration um, to a certain path. And all this would be, um, it, would be uh, it would be executed when, when this uh, server is uh, set up. Um, so I'll just quickly go inside uh, CloudWatch and uh, reload. Let me refresh this one. So there are two log groups, uh, one on cloud init. Let me just refresh this. So let me just take the latest one. So this this logs, whatever you're seeing here, is exactly the one uh, which is driven by uh, the Ansible. Um, and you will see it's it's installing all your uh, PHP dependencies, your um, uh, Drupal-related uh, dependencies, Composer. It's installing Drupal. And, and finally, it's showing as uh, uh, 26 uh, got created and uh, 21 got changed. Um, and, and also there is there's another uh, log uh, which is on uh, Nginx. Um, I think this is the one, yeah. So uh, this, this would be, uh, th this would be uh, add, uh, or this would be, up, uh, uh, this is the logs where, um, uh, it, it, uh, if, if you, if anyone access your um, Drupal, it, uh, you'll be uh, seeing this uh, logs uh, errors or notices here. Um, and coming back to uh, yeah, the Terraforms, uh, let me open. Uh, so this is this is the uh, repository uh, for uh, which which uh, which has all the Terraform uh, um, definitions. And uh, the main uh, the main file here is uh, 
provider uh, provider.tf. Let me just zoom in. Um, so uh, this is where uh, we define uh, what's the version of the Terraform and uh, what's the provider. In this case, uh, it's AWS, and I'm also meant, uh, specifying a, uh, a region, which is coming from a variable, uh, and all my variables are uh, defined uh, within variables.tf, um, which has, has got its own uh, default values. Uh, th there's some output variables as well. Uh, if you might, uh, you might have noticed uh, those output variables uh, that's showing uh, in, in my uh, um, outputs. So that is uh, coming from uh, coming from this particular outputs.tf file. Uh, the next thing uh, is uh, ec2.tf. So th uh, this is where the uh, ec2 resource gets uh, created. Um, there is a resource block here, uh, which is uh, AWS instance. And um, in, in this, uh, there is an AMI, uh, Amazon image that I'm referring. And this is coming from a, a, a particular data that is uh, AWS AMI. And that is coming from, uh, that is coming from, let me go back. Um, there is an AMI.tf, and uh, in this I have defined which which Ubuntu AMI to get to fetch, and then that is that is going inside uh, this particular block uh, with this AMI. So that's how uh, the Ubuntu image gets uh, added uh, within that um, uh, server. Um, and here uh, we define the security group, subnet, uh, and the other important thing is uh, user data. So the user data that I've uh, shown is coming from uh, this particular um, line. And this is also using data. Uh, this is uh, coming from the same file that is uh, this particular uh, block. And in here, I'm using a template uh, uh, that is script.yaml. If you open uh, script.yaml, this is where uh, you will see the exact uh, user data uh, cloud config, which I have uh, shown before. Uh, but uh, I, I'm using some of the variables here uh, for installing the Drupal-related uh, um, uh, related activities. And that variable's uh, coming from my, uh, it's again coming from the ec2.tf uh, in in this uh, in th from this block and all all this is coming from the respective uh, terraform files um, for example uh, the username is coming from uh, the db instance which is uh, which is a terraform file that is coming uh, that is defined under rds.tf so uh, this is where uh, the uh, the MySQL, uh, it's defined, and uh, it, it returns back the output. So yeah, so that's, that's how uh, you uh, define each and every resource uh, uh, with Terraform. You also have VPC that's defined in here. Uh, you, have, uh, you have security groups that's, uh, that's added in here. And uh, yeah, so once that's uh, defined, uh, that's, that's how your, um, uh, your instance gets uh, created. And now let's see, uh, let's see how this uh, instance, let's, let's open this. I haven't uh, added HTTPS. I haven't configured SSL, so um, let's, let's see how that goes. Yeah, so that's there's there's our uh, Drupal uh, which got created, and uh, yeah. So the one thing which I uh, forgot to mention is uh, the uh, Terraform state. So I've mentioned uh, where the Terraform stores its uh, configurations, right? Um, usually it's it, it's stored within the root project root, but here uh, I have used S3 bucket to store the state. Um, so uh, this is the S3 uh, bucket, and in, in that you will see uh, a terraform.tf state. 
uh, if you open this, uh, you will see those whole configuration of the infrastructure that's uh, saved within this file. And uh, the way that I did that is, uh, uh, let me go back to repo. So in here, in uh, this is my uh, Azure pipelines. Uh, this is where I'm um, defining what um, stages that it has, it, it's required validate and um, and, and, and apply. So in here, I, um, I, I have defined the S3, um, S3 bucket or the backend uh, that's Terraform gets started. Uh, this is one one of the place where you have to define. Um, the other place is uh, in provider.tf. You will you will have this uh, along with uh, your version. You will also have uh, a ba uh, another uh, block that's to be added for backend S3. Uh, you'll you'll have to add the bucket name with the key, and with that, uh, Terraform will consider the backend as S3, and it it won't generate that particular S3 within within this particular uh, project. So, yeah. So let's jump back to um, so a uh, few resource um, I've uh, referred to this. Uh, Hashicorp.com um, with uh, registry.terraform.io. Uh, if you want to get uh, more details uh, of how Terraform works, uh, you can uh, uh, follow this. Um, I've, I've created two repositories, uh, which is public. Um, uh, the one which I've just showed, um, Terraform Get Started and the AWS Playbook. Uh, I've also um, uh, published an article uh, on uh, Drupal Asheville earlier this year, uh, talking about the same. Uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to enhance this even more. Uh, like, uh, I, I don't want to keep using the uh, access key for uh, uh, the Azure DevOps and uh, AWS communication. So I'm, I'm going to use uh, Azure Key Vault um, and see how that goes. Um, also, um, I'm exploring uh, more on Terraform modules uh, and uh, using the Terraform cloud. Um, also, I'm uh, going to uh, add even uh, more uh, infrastructure, uh, like um, adding a load balancer, uh, 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 auto-scaling group, uh, uh, configuring SSL, and uh, things like that. Yeah, so um, that's it. Any questions? Hello. Yeah, thank you for the pre presentations. Uh, I have one question on the security part. Okay. So, um, for example, you have created the EC2 instance, okay? And then after, uh, for example, you are using the Ubuntu, and there releases some security. So how you will be patching it using this approach? Okay, uh, that's a good question. So um, usually what we'd be doing is getting uh, so you got, when we have that uh, image, we can create an image out of that. And uh, you can own that image instead of using a third party image. So that's how on a real world we'd be doing that. But for this demo, I have used uh, a, a third party image. But it's always recommended to use, uh, use your image and uh, so that you have the whole control of it. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.